Hi, my name's Kim J, and I'm a visually impaired chef. I'm also a volunteer for RNIB. Now today, I'm going to show you how to make a lovely, easy recipe. It's a soup, and it's a fusion soup. So what is fusion? Fusion is when you combine different elements from different cultures to bring together a dish. Now this soup is a, a, a variation of a Chinese noodle soup and the Italian pasta and it is so easy to make. The ingredients you're going to need for this soup is approximately 150 grams of mushrooms. Now I'm using, using a combination of oyster mushrooms and butter mushrooms. Go to your supermarket and have a look at what type of mushrooms there are. This dish is amazing with wild mushrooms or oriental mushrooms. Now I've also got 150 grams of pasta this is optional and you can use it, but it does taste fabulous with the pasta. I've got 20 grams of water chestnuts and bamboo sh shoots. I've got one vegan corn fillet, two vegetable stock cubes and about an inch of root ginger. I also have eight mange twos. I've got a packet of ready to wok noodles. Now you can use ordinary dried noodles, it really doesn't matter. We're going to need sesame oil. Now sesame oil is great to, in this dish and it does add to the flavour, but if you don't have it, just use ordinary vegetable oil. I've also got soya sauce and rice wine vinegar and a little bit of black pepper. On the hob, I have put a large wok or a large pan and I'm heating it up. Now with a lot of Chinese cooking it is fast and you do it with a hot pan and you do it quite quickly. Now I've, I've given this wok about a minute to heat up and I'm going to put in about a tablespoon of the sesame oil and I'm going to wait until I can hear the sesame oil and smell the aromas coming off it and then I know that oil is hot. I can now smell the oil, so I'm going to put in the, the root ginger, which I've chopped up finely, throw that in, and you can hear it sizzling already. Into that, I'm going to put in the corn fillet, which I've chopped into about a centimetre pieces. Give it a quick stir. Into that, I'm going to add those butter mushrooms, which I've sliced and about a quarter of the oyster mushrooms. Now, butter mushrooms are a lot firmer than most mushrooms, so they're always good to put in at the beginning to start building up the flavours. Give it a quick stir, and I'm now gonna add in about a tablespoon of soy sauce. And it's already smelling delicious. Now, with a pint of water, I've put in the stock cubes and I'm now going to add this liquid to the pan. And be careful when you add the liquid, step away because the steam will start to rise really fast. And now I'm just going to let that simmer for about three minutes. This soup has been simmering for about three minutes. I'm now going to put in the bamboo shoots and water chestnuts. Now they're, they're available in supermarkets in tins. One tin is always way too much so I always freeze the remaining amount and then I always have it at hand and I'm not wasting anything. Now I'm now going to put in the mange too. The pasta, about a quarter a teaspoon of black pepper and this will really lift the soup and add an extra dimension to it. About a tablespoon of rice wine vinegar and half of the remaining mushrooms. I'm now going to give it a stir 
and let that cook for five minutes until that pasta is just soft. Now, if the liquid starts to reduce too much, just add a little bit more water into it. Soup has been simmering for five minutes and I've checked the pasta just by putting my knife through it and it just goes through. And I've now added the noodles and the remaining mushrooms. To, and I'm gonna sort of let it simmer for another two or three minutes to allow the noodles to cook and the flavors to infuse. And it smells utterly delicious. Now there's enough soup here for a family of four, or if you're like me, you make enough so that you can have it for lunches or as a main course for two or three days, and it freezes really well. So you can't go wrong with this soup. Just allow it to cook for those remaining couple of minutes. Here we have my amazing noodle soup. Now here comes the best bit. I'm gonna try it. And already as my spoon goes in there, I, I can smell all the aromas. Wow, that is utterly delicious. What could be better than a fusion of different elements of cultures the blend of aromas and flavours, I mean they are so, so tantalising and tasty. Well worth trying this fabulous noodle soup. Now you have a recipe for a great dish. But when you're in the kitchen there are certain safety guides and rules that you should adhere to and which keeps you safe. Now one of the things that I do before I start cooking is I make sure that I've got shoes on that are sturdy with good grips I make sure that there's nothing on the floor that I can trip over and there are no spillages or liquid or condensation on the floor that makes it a bit of a hazard. Now before cooking the first thing that you do as we all know is wash our hands thoroughly and especially when you're dealing with raw meat at every stage wash your hands thoroughly it stops cross-contamination it keeps you and your family safe. When you're using the oven and the hob, know your oven and hob really well. Now I use tactile markings so that I know exactly what temperature to put the oven on and what setting so that I've not put the grill on when I should be putting the oven on. Now with the hob, whenever you're sort of putting anything on the hob, make sure the handle is not sticking out. Now I like to keep the handle at approximately 10 to 12 and the reason for that is it's not near enough to the unit for you to accidentally knock it off. It is not over another hob which may be on so the handle's getting hot so this is the safest position. Now if you're boiling anything um, be very very careful don't fill the pan up too much and if possible use the boiler alert which tells you when that liquid is bubbling away and it's hot and it keeps you safe. If you're not comfortable with the hob and the oven use the microwave whenever you can it's a lot safer and every time you are taking things out of the oven or from the microwave because remember plates and dishes get extremely hot in a microwave use oven gloves now, I like to use thermal oven gloves. They're a lot safer. Don't be tempted to use tea towels or anything else. And they literally go to extreme temperatures, so you're very safe with them. Whenever you cut any food in the kitchen, use safe cutting methods. Keep the blade away from your fingers. So set it a, a, a couple of millimetres away from your fingers and that way you're safe all the time. Now, if you're not confident with a knife, you can use appliances like food processors. Make sure you know how they work properly um, and keep safe. And if you're still not confident, ask somebody else to do it. It is better to be safe than have an injury. If you have any cuts or you cut yourself whilst you're in the kitchen, put a plaster on it. And if you have a burn, run it under cold water. And if it's bad, you seek medical advice straight away. Whenever you cook meat, always ensure that the meat is thoroughly cooked because you know, you know, raw meat, 
will give you food poisoning. Now, the best optimum temperature to cook meat is between 66 degrees and 73 degrees. Use a food thermometer if you're not too sure. They do have talking food thermometers, which you can get quite easily. And you store the meat as soon as you can, as soon as it's cooled down, store it straight away in the fridge and read the advice on storage on the labels.